if you were a guy, a typical guy uh, in 1960, 1950, 40, even if you didn't even graduate high school, you could earn enough money to get married, support your wife who did not have a job. She did not have to work. She stayed home. She, you know, she did the cooking and the cleaning and maybe even had a house help. Uh, so you could support that woman, that wife on your blue collar job, right? That you didn't even go to college for. And you could have two or three kids, four kids. You could raise them. You didn't have to borrow any money. You had no credit cards. Uh, you know, you, 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 you made enough money to actually be able to support your family on your income without going into debt, <laughs> you know, and you could also save for retirement. So today that's impossible. Even the average college grad can't support a wife today. So he, the wife has to have a job just to be able to, to pay the rent or to pay the mortgage. And they're doing that with debt, even with both people working, even with a husband and wife, both working full-time jobs. Sometimes they're working two jobs. They still have no savings. Mm. They're still on debt. Whereas a guy in 1950 did all that without his wife and without the debt. Uh, and, and so are we really better off now than we were despite all of the technology? And in fact, if you go back and you look at the changes in America, from like 1900 to 19, or let's say 1890 or to 1950 or 19, you know, compared to from 1950 to now or whatever this 1880, whatever this similar set period is, life improved much more back then, mm. right? If you looked at Amer if you looked at America in 1880, right, versus 1950, nobody had electricity. Nobody had cars. Nobody had air conditioning. No one had telephones. Uh, there was no movies. Uh, you know, I mean, people in 1880 didn't live much different than people lived in 1680 or 1480. I mean, there, but all of a sudden, you know, we started to have a free market revolution. We had sound money. We were on a. We ended the Civil War. Right. We we're on a gold standard, limited government, and we had this industrial revolution where people now have electricity indoor plumbing you know they have they have refrigeration they have air conditioning they have telephones they have uh airplanes they have cars i mean i mean if you took somebody in a time machine from 1880 to 1950 they would be completely amazed at everything they saw i mean it would be oh my god it would be unbelievable the difference in the quality of life uh between reading by candles and having to go to bathroom in an outhouse and, you know, and having no, I mean, to, I mean, to all the things to, to, to the just going into a kitchen in 1950 with all those appliances that none of them existed. People, I mean, they didn't have laundry machines. They didn't have dishwashers. All that stuff was here in 1950. The only real difference between 1950 and now is we have cell phones uh, and we have personal computers. Um, but, you know, other than that, we don't have – it's not that much different as far as life, the, 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 the improvement in, in life. And if you figure that we're working a lot harder and we have a lot less to show for it. So, you know, we could be so much richer than we are if uh, we had maintained that trajectory. Like I like to – I used to watch this show uh, called The Jetsons. Oh, when yeah. I was a kid, nineteen sixties, <laughs> and so when they wrote this, when they wrote the sixties, they, they they made this. Uh, Hanna Barbera made the cartoon. They just assumed that life would continue to evolve the way it did. So in the future, George Jetson, who is the husband, right? Judy, his wife, she doesn't have a job, and George only works two days a week. Right. For like four hours a day. And he like is like, oh, these two day work weeks are killing me. I pushed the button like eight times, you know, like like, you know, um, work. People are working less. Right. People are enjoying more leisure and more freedom because we've continued to advance our technology and make capital investments that free up labor so that people don't have to work as much. That is the idea. That is the goal of society. I mean, it's not a goal that anybody is orchestrating on their own, but ultimately what capitalism does is it replaces labor with machines. 
so that all of us don't have to work as hard and we can have more leisure. We can have we we can we can do the things in life that we enjoy, not the stuff that we have to do because the, we can produce more and right? we get more goods. We get more services with less human effort going into it. And then everybody benefits from the abundance of goods that are produced, goods and services. Mm. Uh, but, you know, what's happening now is we're not we're, we're not doing that. We're trying to figure out how we don't want we want to make sure that we're all working hard. I mean, that is not what people want. People don't want to work hard. They want they want to work as little as possible and have as much as possible. And that free markets ultimately do that. And we were moving in that direction. I mean, that's what got that's why women stopped working. You know, once upon a time, women had to work. So did men. You know, chi- children used to have to work. The, the reason that children stop working isn't because of child labor laws. No, it's because that their parents or their father was able to become more productive based on the gains in productivity from the free market that the kids didn't have to work anymore. That That's what happened. You know, that's why you still have child labor in some countries. It's not because their parents are mean. It's because it's the only way they could feed them. So, Peter, if you if let's say, because I, I think we would both agree that um, we don't have a lot of faith in the government shrinking, then that's what it would take. Right. It would take government having to shrink. And that's probably not going to happen based off of what we've seen for the last few decades, for sure. So if there was somebody during this time who was a little more prudent and saved a hundred thousand dollars and they're not freaking out right now how would you advise them to invest knowing what you know and what you probably predict is going to happen with government that's a, that's a great question because the what i'm getting from you is save your money but i'm also getting from you money's going to be worthless so what do you do what do you do you got a hundred grand you want to invest yeah actually absolutely because the key to economic growth is savings. Savings is what provides the capital uh, for businesses to expand and and invest in the equipment uh, and 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 create the jobs that uh, delivers prosperity. But what the government is doing is destroying savings, and so the economy is going to implode when you have a a war on savings. And you know, government shrinking is yes, it's extremely important because that's the only way out of a recession is to reduce the burden that government places on an economy. Uh, by cutting spending. And so if the government really wanted to help, they would make itself smaller by cutting spending and and reducing regulations so that the economy uh, would be better able uh, to get us out of this mess uh, by freeing up resources back to the private sector that would be able to be used productively. But none of that is going to happen. So what you have to understand is if you are in the minority of people who actually did do it right, right, you have savings, you are going to be taxed through inflation to bail out all the people who have debt and don't have savings. That is what happens. So when the government prints up all this money and sends it to the unemployed and sends it to businesses, where is the purchasing power coming from? It's being taken from the people who already have money, right? So the government has two ways of taxing you. The legitimate way is by actually taking your money in taxes. Like you have a hundred dollars and the government says, we're going to take 30 and we're going to use it uh, to, to, to spend on, on stuff. Right? So you had a hundred, the government takes 30, you got 70 left. Well, what if the government doesn't take the 30, they just print money and spend it. Well, now your hundred dollars feels like $70 because prices have gone up to the point where you you've lost 30% of your purchasing power. So there's no free lunch. The government is going to get you one way or the other. And so the way they're taxing everybody, the way they're taxing the prudent to bail out the reckless is through inflation. And the good news, though, is that the inflation tax is avoidable, at least for now. Right. It's not illegal. You can get rid of your dollars that are about to depreciate and convert them into something else. Right. You can buy gold. And as the dollar goes down in value, the price of gold will go up. So instead of having uh, you know, a thousand dollars of gold, you know, you now end up with 1500 or 2000. So you can afford the higher prices. So the government's not taxing the people who own gold because they're not printing gold. They're only taxing the people who have dollars. <laughs> 